Gangster Granny, Chapter 19 A Small Explosive Device The next morning, as Mum and Dad went through song after song to select some music for their son's upcoming dance competition, Ben sneaked out of the house and cycled to the hospital. When he finally found Granny's ward, he saw that there was a bespectacled doctor perched on her bed. Nevertheless, he raced over excitedly to see the old lady so he could share the plan with her. The doctor was holding Granny's hand and talking to her slowly and quietly. Just give us a moment alone, please, Ben, said Granny. The doctor and I are just talking about, you know, lady things. Oh, uh, okay, said Ben. He slowed back to the swing doors and leafed through a sickly looking copy of Take a Break. The doctor passed him and said, I'm sorry, before leaving the ward. Sorry, thought Ben. Why is he sorry? And he walked tentatively over to Granny's bed. Granny was dabbing at her eyes with a tissue, but when she saw Ben approach, she stopped and shoved it back up the sleeve of her nightdress. Are you okay, Granny? He asked softly. Yes, I'm fine. I just have something in my eye. Then why did the doctor say I'm sorry to me? Granny looked flustered for a moment. Mm, well, I imagine he was sorry that he wasted your time in coming here. There is absolutely nothing wrong with me as it turns out. Really? Yes, the doctor gave me the test results. I'm fit as a butcher's dog. Ben hadn't heard that expression before, but he imagined it must mean very, very fit. Th that's brilliant news, Granny, exclaimed Ben. Now, I know you said no before. Is this what I think it is, Ben? Asked Granny. Ben nodded. I said no a hundred times. Yes, but... But what, young man? I found a weakness in the Tower of London, and I've spent all week working on a plan of how we can steal the jewels. I think we can really do it. To his surprise, Granny looked intrigued. Pull the curtain and keep your voice down, hissed the old lady, flicking the switch on her hearing aid to full power. Ben quickly pulled the curtains round, curtains round Granny's bed and then sat down next to her. So at the stroke of midnight, we swim across the Thames in scuba diving gear and locate the ancient sewerage pipe here, whispered Ben showing her the detailed diagram in the, back issue, in the back issue of Plumbing Weekly. We have to swim up a sewage pipe? At my age? said Granny. Don't be daft, boy. Shush, keep your voice down, said Ben. Sorry, whispered Granny. And it's not daft, it's brilliant. The pipe is just wide enough. Look, here. Granny lifted herself up from her pillows and moved closer to the page in Plumbing Weekly. She studied the diagram. It indeed looked wide, enough, looked wide enough. Now, if we swim up the pipe, we can get inside the tower undetected, continued Ben. Everywhere else, around the perimeter of the building, there are armed guards and security cameras and laser sensors. Take any other route in, and we don't stand a chance. Yes, yes, yes. But then how in the blazes do we get into the jewel house, where the jewels are kept? She whispered. The sewage pipe ends here at the privy. I beg your pardon? The privy, it's an old word for toilet. Oh, yes, so it is. From the privy, it's a short run. <clears throat> uh, I mean, short walk across the courtyard to the jewel house. At night, the door to the house is, of course, locked and double locked. Probably triple locked. Granny didn't seem that convinced. Well, Ben would just have to convince her. The door is solid steel, so we'll have to drill the locks to open it. But the crowns and scepters and all that, Gubbins, must surely be kept behind bulletproof glass, Ben, said Granny. Yes, but the, but the glass isn't bombproof. We'll set off a small explosive device to shatter the glass. An explosive device, spluttered Granny. Where on earth are we going to get that from? I swiped a few chemicals from science class, replied Ben with a smirk. I'm pretty sure I can create an explosion big enough to get through that glass. But the guards will hear the explosion, Ben. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's never going to work, exclaimed Granny as quietly as she could. 
Well, I thought of that, said Ben, momentarily delighted by his own ingenuity. You know, yeah, you need to board a train to London earlier that day, posing as a sweet old lady. I am a sweet old lady, protested Granny. You know what I mean, continued Ben with a smile. From the station, you take the number 78 bus all the way to the Tower of London. Then you give the beef eater guards chocolate cake with something in it to make them sleep. Oh, I could use my special herbal sleeping tonic, said Granny. Ah, yes, fantastic. So the guards eat the chocolate cake and by night time they will be fast asleep. Chocolate cake, protested Granny. Surely the guards would prefer some of my delicious homemade cabbage cake. And here we got Granny's recipe for cabbage cake. Take six large moldy cabbages. Mash up the cabbages with your potato masher. Put the cabbage mush into a baking tray. Bake in the oven until your whole house smells of cabbage. Wait a month for the cake to go stale. Slice and serve. Sick bucket optional. Um, ben squirmed. He didn't want to upset Granny, but there was no way anyone would eat a piece of Granny's cabbage cake unless they were intimately related to her. And even then, they would probably spit it out when she wasn't looking. I think a chocolate cake from the supermarket would be better. Well, you seem to have thought out, thought of everything. I'm very impressed, you know. I'm very impressed, you know. The idea of using that old pipe is genius. Ben flushed with pride. Thanks. But how did you know about it? They don't teach you that stuff at school, do they? About sewage pipes and that? No, said Ben. It's just, I've always loved plumbing. I remember the old pipes being in my favorite magazine. He held up plumbing weekly. It's my dream to be a plumber one day. He looked down, expecting Granny to tell him off or mock him. Why are you looking at the ground? asked Granny. Mm, well... I know it's silly and boring to want to be a plumber. I know I should want to do something more interesting. Ben felt his face turning bright red. Granny put a hand on his chin and gently tilted his head up. Nothing you did could ever be silly or boring, Ben, she said. If you want to be a plumber and it's your dream, then no one can take it away from you. Do you understand? All you can do in this life is follow your dreams. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. I, I guess. I should hope so. Honestly, you say that plumbing is boring, but here you are, planning to seal the crown jewels for goodness sake. And it's all down to plumbing. Ben smiled. Maybe Graham was right. But I have a question for you, Ben. Yes? How do we escape? A plan like this is no good if you're going to get caught red-handed, my lad. I know that, Granny. So I thought we should go out the way we came in, through the sewerage pipe, and swim back across the Thames. It's only 50 metres wide, and I've got my 100 metre swimming badge. It will be a doddle. Granny bit her lip. She obviously wasn't sure that any of this would be a doddle, not at least swimming across a fast-flowing river at night. Ben looked at her with hope in his eyes. Well, Granny, are you in? Are you still a gangster? She looked deep in thought for quite a while. Please, pleaded Ben. I've loved hearing about all your adventures, and I really want to go on a heist with you. And this would be the ultimate, stealing the crown jewels. You said yourself, it was every great thief's dream. Well, Granny, are you in? Granny looked at her grandson's glowing face. After a while, she murmured, Yes. Ben leaped from his chair and hugged her. Brilliant! Granny lifted her weak arms and embraced him. It was the first time in years she had really hugged him. But I have one condition, said the old lady, with a deadly serious look in her eyes. What? whispered Ben. We put them back the next night. That's it for chapter 19. We'll be back next time for chapter 20.